All right, this is Firemine here, and today we have a very exciting tutorial. Today I am going to show you how you can kill an enemy. And by killing, not just killing or making him vanish, but actually making him become a ragdoll and react to wherever you shoot him. So as you can see here, we can shoot our enemies in different places and each of them will react differently. This is achieved by making them a ragdoll when they die. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Please enjoy. Also, please note that if you are not very comfortable with writing code, I actually set up a website where you can copy all the code that is used in this tutorial. So no downloading, just copy paste it. That website is firemindacademy.net and I linked the link for this tutorial in the description below. We are starting off with a very basic scene. We have a enemy that is walking towards us. We have a weapon that is able to shoot lasers. If you do not know how to shoot lasers, please check out the tutorial that I linked in my description below. And other than that, we're only going to use standard assets. You don't have to buy anything for this tutorial. So let's get right into it. Step one, click on your enemy and make him a ragdoll. You achieve that by right clicking and go through 3D and then ragdoll. Here you want to drag all of your bones of the skeleton of your enemy onto where they belong. You have to experiment a little bit. Sometimes the bones are not exactly called what they are in this little window here. So do some experimenting and once you're done, click create. Once you are done creating the ragdoll, you should see some box colliders around the joints of your enemy. Now you might have to adjust them a little bit depending on what model you are using. In order to check out if they are working correctly, go ahead and disable the animator, box colliders that are like on the top parent of your enemy. Also, you want to disable any scripts that move him or do anything to him. You basically only want the new box colliders on the joints to be enabled. Once you do that, hit play and see if your enemy falls over. If it does, you have successfully created a ragdoll. Step two. So essentially what we want to do now is that we want to enable this rigid body when the, when the enemy dies. So let's do that. So let's go over here to add a new component and add a new script, call that script enemy controller. And then in enemy controller, you end up with the standard functions. In here, go and create a new function that is called die. And in that function, you will be writing the code that is needed to actually let the enemy die. Now let's write the functions that are actually going to enable and disable the ragdoll. So there are two parts to this. The first part is enabling the rigid bodies and the other part is enable enabling the colliders. So we'll make two functions. The first one is going to be called set rigid body state. In here, we're going to have a rigid body array. I'm going to call that rigid bodies. And we're going to get all the components in the children of rigid bodies. So we're going to get all of the rigid bodies on our bones. And then we're going to loop through these and enable or disable all of them. So for that, we're going to use a for each loop. Now we want to set all of our rigid bodies on the children to is kinematic and then to the state that we pass it. Now we can basically copy the rigid body function and do the same thing for colliders. So here basically replace everything that you had with rigid bodies before with colliders. And instead of making it kinematic, you want to make uh, you want to set the enabled value here. Now in the beginning, we want the ragdoll to be turned off. So we're going to call these two functions and we're going to set the rigid bodies to true and the colliders to false. We can check our scene if this is working already. However, the problem is that so far, the rigid body and the capsule collider that is on the parent is also gets changed by our function. So we want to change that too. So let's go back to our code. And in here, after we loop through all of them, we actually want to get the component on the parent and set it to the opposite of what we're setting it in the function here. We do that on both functions. And then after that, our enemy should behave just fine. We now want to define what actually happens inside the die function. So the first thing we want to do is we want to turn off the animator. So get the component, 
and then set the animator to disabled. After that, we are gonna call the two functions that we just created. So just copy them from the start function. And in there, we wanna turn around or switch the values that we had before. So we're gonna set the rigid body state to false and the set collider state to true. We also wanna destroy the game object. So the enemy, once he died, vanishes after like two seconds or three seconds, that's up to you. And then that's it. That's all you need to switch your enemy to a ragdoll once he gets hit by some projectile. However, you still do need to call this function whenever you shoot at your enemy. So let's go to wherever your enemy gets hit. In my case, I'm using a raycast to shoot at the enemy. So I'm gonna get the enemy object from my hit from the raycast. But if you used a projectile, you can easily just get it from the onCollide function or something like that. In my case, I'm just gonna use the hit transform get component on the enemy controller and then call the function from there. And then that's it. That's all you need to turn your enemy into a ragdoll once he gets hit by your shot. However, we still wanna apply some force to him because right now what we want is we want him to kind of like fly away when he gets hit by the laser so it looks a little bit more, I guess, funky. So for that, we're gonna have to apply some explosive force to him once he gets hit by that laser. Now in this step, we actually want to apply some force to the enemy so that once he gets hit, he gets kind of like blown away. You can do this a couple of ways. In my case, I have a explosion that is already instantiated whenever the laser gets to a certain point. So I'm going to write that instantiation of that force inside of that explosion function. However, you can still do this with a raycast with getting the point where the raycast hit or even getting the point where your projectile hit. So you just need to find the function where you want to instantiate your force. So wherever you want to do that, let's go into that function right now. And in here, you want to get a array of colliders and you're going to use the physics overlap sphere. So that's basically just like a I guess big ray cast that's being casted and whatever collider is hits, it returns. You want to instantiate that at the position where this is. And in my case, that's actually transform position because I'm using the position of the laser. That might be a different point for you. If you're using hit, that will be the hit point. Then the thing after that is the radius of that sphere. So however far you want your blast radius to go. And then once you have that, you want to do a for each loop over all the colliders that the overlap sphere actually hit so do a for each loop and then the close objects which is are the objects that are getting hit so you want to get the rigid body of them and then apply a explosive force to them and we're going to do that by add explosion force the first value in here is the actual force then the second value is the position of where the force is coming from and then the last value is the radius that should be the same as you said before and then that's it that's all you need for the enemy to be blasted away. You can then go ahead and create a couple of more enemies just because it's always more fun to shoot at more enemies than just that one. Now you can see that the enemies are getting blasted differently depending on where you actually hit them. You can also go ahead and apply a bigger force to it and actually see them fly away like miles. So I hope that you have been blasted away by this tutorial as well. And if you liked it, please leave me a like. That would be really appreciated. Also, if you want to see more tutorials, please subscribe. And if you have any questions, ask me in the comments down below. Also, if you have any requests for tutorials. Can't find the tutorial you are looking for? Well, just ask for it then. Just go to tutorial-request.com and check out if other people are searching for the same tutorial as you do. If you find a matching request, make sure to leave it a like, so other creators always know what's in demand. And if you can't find a request that you are looking for, just create a new one. Simply click on New Request, then choose a title, topic, and description for your request, and simply click on Make Request, and you're done. It's that easy. And with your request, you help creators know what's in demand. So go over to tutorial-request.com and sign up today. It's free.